I like to do yoga, yoga stretching while I meditate. Is there something to, to sit still that adds to the meditation? I'm a wiggly person. Thank but it's hard for me to, um, to give specific recommendations for people because I don't know your circumstance. I do think that sit, sitting meditation can be negative sometimes for certain people. So um, if you've had trauma or PTSD, when you're having PTSD or you're having trauma, um, it can sometimes be best to do something else rather than to sit there because um, yeah, if you know about trauma, it's like it sets off your whole system and your adrenaline and you know you stoop in it and you can't get out of it. So yeah, if you're having traumatic reactions when you're meditating, then I would recommend getting a one-to-one -one session to be better guided. Um, also, if you have OCD, that also can not be so good if you sit and meditate. So if you have OCD or you have trauma, something like yoga can be a lot better. Um, if it's just a simple case of sitting and wiggling and um, feeling uncomfortable, that's fascinate, fascinating. So yoga can sometimes make us feel good. It can also make us feel bad, but it releases a lot of adren um, endorphins. It, you know, it does great things for the psyche in the moment of doing it. So it often can be very relaxing for people. It can also be the opposite, but it's the same with working out. You often feel good afterwards. Yeah, there's great things, the deep breathing. There's so many benefits to doing yoga. And I think it's great to do. But isn't it interesting, the discomfort with sitting still? So that can just be explored. It might be that meditation isn't suitable for you, but it could also be that, um, that there is a block there that's happening, like a fear of something fear of discomfort, a fear of your mind, a fear of the stillness. But the I am practice doesn't need to be done when it's just sitting still, it's in everything. As you're walking, as you're cooking, as you're sunbathing, as you're playing with your kids, you know, it's, it's um, there for everybody. At every time, it's always here. And then to the next part of the question, then it has to be, who is the one that meditates? So even though we're giving apparent prescription, it's only really description of what can happen because who is this person that's choosing? So that's also a great thing to question. Who is the person that wants to meditate? And who is the person that is putting the attention in the meditation, in the I am? Who is that? Weird, eh? <laughs> and then you notice at some point there'll be these little doors that open, like, ah, is that there is this looking and this I am that's never moved and always been there and never done anything. And it's like your most fundamental sense of being. And you thought your fundamental sense of being was that one that was having a narrative of, I choose this, I do that, I'm going there, I'm doing this, I'm a good person, bad person. But there's something beyond that that is the fundamental place of being and this is something that's coming and going claiming to be everything thanks Kathy